Welcome to this short educational podcast on gas tungsten arc welding, GTAW. In this episode, we'll provide a concise overview of the GTAW process, key equipment, and techniques used in this advanced welding method. While it may not be a typical podcast, this brief format is designed to help you quickly grasp the essentials of GTAW in a way that's easy to understand and apply. Overview The gas tungsten arc welding, GTAW process, also pronounced as GTAW, uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode to produce the weld. A shielding gas, typically an inert gas like argon, protects the weld area from atmospheric contamination. The process may or may not employ a filler metal. Some welds, autogenous welds, do not require filler metal at all. A constant current welding power source generates energy conducted through the arc by a highly ionized gas column and metallic vapors, referred to as plasma. Welders commonly utilize GTAW to join thin, thin sections of stainless steel and non-ferrous metals, such as aluminum, magnesium, and copper alloys. GTAW offers the welder greater control over the weld compared to other methods like shielded metal arc welding, SMW, or gas metal arc welding, GMW. This enables stronger, higher quality welds. However, GTAW is comparatively more complex, requiring greater precision, skill, and control, and is significantly slower than most other welding techniques. This overview explains the fundamentals of the GTAW process, equipment requirements, and critical variables that influence weld quality. Topics include equipment setup, material preparation, positioning, arc starting, welding of pipes and plates, weld repair, and safety precautions. Additionally, this guide highlights the importance of adhering to welding safety measures. For precise operational and maintenance details, refer to manufacturer's manuals. 1.0 Introduction to the Process Gas tungsten arc welding, GTAW, is an arc process that produces coalescence of metals by heating them with an arc between a non-consumable tungsten electrode and the workpiece. Shielding is provided by an inert or semi-inert gas. The use of pressure and filler metal varies based on the application. This process is commonly referred to as TIG welding, an acronym for tungsten inert gas welding. Regardless of terminology, the principles remain the same. GTAW is versatile and capable of welding a wide range of metals in all positions. Welding positions other than flat depend on factors such as the base metal, welding current, and operator skill. Originally developed for welding challenging materials, GTAW can join more metal types than any other arc welding process. The welder benefits from a clearly visible arc and weld pool. GTAW produces no slag to trap in the weld, and filler metal does not pass through the arc, leading to minimal spatter. Additionally, because the tungsten electrode is non-consumable, welds can be made by fusing the base material without using filler metal. GTAW was invented in 1941 by Russell Meredith from the Northrop Air Aircraft Welding Group. Initially referred to as HeliArc, the process used helium, AE, for shielding. Over time, argon, AR, became the preferred shielding gas due to its lower cost and higher availability. Advancements in welding current. Initially, direct current with electrode positive, DCRP, was employed. However, this caused overheating of the electrode, leading to tungsten contamination in the weld. Switching to direct current with electrode negative, DCFP, resolved this issue, particularly for stainless steel applications. During World War II, alternating current welding machines with high-frequency stabilization enabled high-quality welding of aluminum and magnesium. With helium largely replaced by argon, the GTAW process gained broader acceptance in the 1950s and is now a standard method as defined by the American Welding Society. Gas Tungsten Arc Welding, GTAW Tungsten arc welding, or GTAW, is a specialized type of arc welding. Unlike processes that use consumable electrodes, in GTAW, the tungsten electrode serves only to create the arc and is not consumed during welding. This results in welds of significantly higher quality compared to those made with consumable metal electrodes. GTAW is especially useful for welding aluminum, but is effective on many other metals as well. The GTAW process is most effective for joining metals up to 1 8 inch thick, but can also be applied to thicker materials with proper technique and equipment. The basic GTA process utilizes an intense arc between the base metal and a tungsten electrode. The arc, electrode, and weld zone are surrounded by an inert gas, 
such as helium, argon, or a combination, which displaces air and prevents contamination by atmospheric oxygen and nitrogen. Due to the tungsten electrode's high melting point, it remains virtually non-consumable. Advantages of GTAW Pi Welding can be performed in all positions. The weld typically matches the composition of the base metal. No flux is required, so there are no corrosive residues to clean. The process produces no smoke or fumes, allowing for clear visib visibility of the weld area. Heat is concentrated in a small area, minimizing base metal distortion. There is no spatter, as metal is not transferred across the arc. Equipment and supplies for GTAW. The essential equipment and supplies for GTAW include 1. Power source. GTW requires a power source capable of providing a stable current. While most welding machines, whether alternating current, AC, or direct current, DC, can meet this need, the choice of current depends on the application. Direct current reverse polarity, DCRP, and direct current straight polarity, DCSP, offer specific advantages depending on the material being welded. GTAW-specific welding machines are available with built-in controls designed to optimize the process. These machines often address the challenges of bulkiness and hose or cable connections present in general purpose equipment. Two, shielding gas. Inert gases, such as argon, argon or helium, or their mixtures, are necessary to shield the weld zone from atmospheric contamination. Three, pressure regulator and flow meter. These components regulate the shielding gas pressure and ensure a consistent flow rate during welding. Four, torch, electrode holder. The torch is the primary tool for holding the non-consumable tungsten electrode. 5. Tungsten electrodes Non-consumable tungsten electrodes are central to the process. They can be alloyed with materials such as thorium, lanthanum, or cerium to enhance performance. 6. Filler rods Filler rods, when required, must match the base metal's cushion to ensure the weld's strength and integrity. 7. Cooling water supply for high current applications, a cooling water supply is necessary to prevent overheating of the torch. 8. Personal protective equipment, PPE. Proper safety gear, including a welding helmet, gloves, and protective clothing, is vital to protect against arc radiation, heat, and potential burns. By understanding these fundamentals of GTAW and using the appropriate equipment, welders can achieve precision, high-quality welds across various applications. Power sources for GTA, Power sources for gas tungsten arc welding, or GTAW, are equipped with solenoid valves to control the flow of shielding gas and cooling water, enabling precise operation. These valves turn the shielding gas and cooling water on and off as needed. A remote control switch, which may be, may be manually operated or activated via a foot pedal, controls these systems and can also activate or deactivate the welding current. This setup allows the operator to control the entire process from the workstation, adjusting the current as needed during welding without interruption. Most GTAW power sources provide both alternating AC and direct current DC, allowing flexibility based on the welding requirements. A direct current, D a direct current welding circuit can operate with either straight polarity or reverse polarity. Straight polarity, DCSP. Electrons flow from the electrode to the workpiece, focusing most, of the, focusing most of the heat on the base metal. This method is preferred for GTAW because it enables higher quality welds, reduces base metal distortion, and speeds up the welding process. Reverse polarity, DCRP. Electrons flow from the workpiece to the electrode, concentrating more heat on the electrode. This requires larger diameter electrodes to handle the intense heat. While DCRP is rarely used in GTAW, it can be effective for welding aluminum or magnesium sections because the positively charged gas ions help clean the oxide layer on the metal surface. DCRP produces a wide, shallow weld and is less common than DCSP in W applications. AC. Alternating current welding is a combination of DCSP and DCRP. However, during the reverse polarity half cycle, the oxide layer on the metal can interfere with current flow, potentially making the arc unstable or extinguishing it. To address this issue, this issue AC welding machines for GTAW are equipped with high-frequency current units. These units ensure stable arc performance by piercing the oxide layer and providing a continuous path for the welding current. High-frequency alternating current, 
ACHF, combines the advantages of both DCRP and DSP and is particularly effective for welding aluminum. GTAW torches are designed to conduct both the welding current and the inert shielding gas to the weld zone. Depending on the welding current, torches can be air-cooled torches, suitable for light materials and lower current settings, water-cooled torches, recommended for higher current levels, typically above 200 amps, to prevent overheating. A GTAW torch carries the welding current through a power cable and transmits it to a collet, which holds the tungsten electrode. The torch directs the shielding gas through its nozzle to the weld area, ensuring protection against contamination. Torch nozzles, gas cups, are typically made from ceramic, but may also be constructed from steel, chrome-plated, plastic, or glass, Pyrex, depending on the application. The size of the nozzle varies based on the torch type and the electrode diameter. Proper insulation of the torch is essential to an safety and reliable performance at maximum current levels. The electrode extension in GTAW welding. The electrode should extend beyond the end of the gas cup by a distance equal to its diameter for joint welding and slightly more for fillet welding. Choosing the correct electrode size for each job is critical to avoid damage to the electrode and poor quality welds caused by too high or too low a current. Excessive current causes tungsten particles to transfer into the weld, while insufficient current allows the arc to wander on the electrode tip. The diameter of the electrode selected for GW welding is determined by the welding current being used. Remember, DCRP requires larger electrodes than DCSP. Recommended electrode dimensions for various welding current ranges are broad. Always consult the manufacturer's recommendations for specific current ranges and electrode sizes based on the type of material being welded. The basic diameters of non-consumable electrodes are 0.040 or 0, 116, 330 TAF, and 1 8 inch. These are made of pure tungsten or tungsten alloy. The alloyed electrodes come in three types. 1% thorium alloy, 2% thorium alloy, and zirconium alloy. Pure tungsten is routinely used for AC welding and suffices for most GTABU welding operations. Thorium types are typically used for DCSP welding. They offer slightly better penetration and arc starting characteristics across a broader range of settings. Zirconium alloy is excellent for AC welding and highly resistant to contamination. Thorium and zirconium alloyed electrodes are primarily used for critical welds in the aviation and missile industries. Tung tungsten electrodes are usually color-coded on one end. Green indicates pure tungsten. Yellow indicates 1% thorium. Red indicates 2% thorium. And brown indicates tungsten alloyed with zirconium. To produce high-quality welds with GTAW, you must properly shape the electrode. The general practice is to use a pointed electrode for direct current welding and a spherical end for alternating current welding. Shielding gas. The shielding gas for GTADU can be argon, helium, or a mixture of argon and helium. Argon is by far the most popular. Compared to helium, argon has greater cleaning action and provides more stable arc. Argon is heavier than air, creating a layer over the weld that protects it from contaminants. Helium, being lighter than air, requires a higher gas flow rate than argon, making it more expensive. However, as a shielding gas, helium allows for greater penetration and faster welding speeds because the arc is hot, hotter in a helium atmosphere than in argon. The opposite is true is true for GW, so a mixture of argon and helium is sometimes used when welding metals requiring higher heat input. For most GTAW operations, pure argon is used. Filler rods. Filler metal is typically unnecessary when welding light gauge materials with GTA, as they tend to fuse easily. For thicker materials or thin materials needing reinforcement, filler rods should be used. Special filler rods for GTA W are available, so oxyacetylene welding rods should not be used as they can contaminate the tungsten electrode. Filler rods should match the base metal composition. For instance, use carbon steel rods for low carbon steel and aluminum rods for aluminum. Additionally, since many different compositions of the same metal exist, select a filler rod with the same composition as the material being welded. Personal protective equipment, PPE, a welding helmet, similar to the one used in shielded metal arc welding, should be worn during GTAB welding. The correct lens shade depends on the arc intensity. For standard GTAB welding, 
in the 76 to 200 ampere range, a shade 10 lens is sufficient. If you experience eye strain, switch to a different lens shade or check for leaks around the protective glass. In addition to the helmet, protective clothing like gloves and an apron should be worn. Bare skin should never be exposed to the welding arc's rays, as painful burns can occur. Thank you for listening. We're committed to building content that you want to hear. Have suggestions? Let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and